Just look at this beaut. Now, this is a beauty of a card right here, guys. Uh, Gem Mint 9 from some company called CTA. It's a Hideki Hirabu rookie card from Bowman Chrome 1997. Now, you might be thinking, why am I showing off this mute? Well, I decided to throw my hat into the rink for Caleb's cards, TTM autographs, and more. He had this awesome, fantastic idea of your worst MLB player team contest. Now, he did this off of Ray's, Ray from Philly's top MLB players ever contest of all time. Well, Caleb is decided to throw a wrench into that and say, let's do the worst MLB players of all time. And he got me to thinking because he actually listed a, a few Japanese players, and I'm like, that is a great idea. I have never thought to do one, the worst ever baseball players to ever play the game. But to think of some of the Japanese players because so many of them are super hyped. Or sometimes they come over here and like literally no one knows they're here. Even though they might be a big deal in Japan, we as American fan, American fans of MLB never hear of them. Like sometimes we don't even know they're actually on our team. And I'm going to say talk about that here in a moment. So... I wanted to do, I wanted to put those two things together and come up with my list of the top MLB or the top, whatever, 12 players to play the MLB from Japan who actually were the worst players to ever play the game. So I just could not pass this opportunity up to do this. I have my little cheat sheet going right here and I have everything I think I need uh, to get going. I wanted to, sorry, there's one one guy in particular that his, his quote is so epic. I have to read it here in a moment after we get going. So I got to read that. It's so epic. So with that being said, I, I, everybody, I was able to get everybody in a, in a position except first base. There's never been a Japanese first baseman. So my first baseman will be left blank to be filled in a, at a later date. So my first one up, though, is Hideki Rabu. Fat Toad, as a lot of people were uh, calling him, especially uh, O. Steinbrenner. He came over as a bit, really big hype. He came over from 1997 to 2002. He had an ERA of 5.15. So he was not the uh, person they thought they were going to be getting. They thought they were going to get like another Nomo. That never happened. Uh, Irabu had lots of... Um, Problems after he left the Major League Baseball. A lot of people don't know this, but his dad's actually was an American GI. And uh, he never, I don't think he ever really know, knew his dad. But his dad was an American. And he had lots of legal trouble and family trouble. And uh, he later on had killed himself. He committed suicide. So, I mean, like I said, there's nothing funny about any of that stuff. But the whole purpose of it is was that he came over as a mega hype. And never, never, unfortunately, mounted to the the, the amount that they thought he was going to be getting. Uh, the next up is Siyoshi Shinjo. Now, a few cool things about Shinjo is when I say cool, I don't mean that in a good way. He only played for two years from 01 to 03. I believe he was on the Mets, so they shipped him off to the Met, uh, Giants, and the Giants shipped him somewhere, maybe back to the Mets. So he only was lasted about two years max. He is the very first Japanese-born baseball player to ever be in a World Series. He was in the same World Series with Jeff Kent and Barry Bonds. He didn't really do much in the World Series, as you would expect. And his batting average was a whopping 245. You will find out that almost every single Japanese baseball player that came over here is a Mendoza line candidate. <clears throat> but he also was the very second position player ever to come over here, I believe, after Ichiro. Ichiro was first, and then he came right after that. And he kind of didn't like the fact that Ichiro got all the accolades because he came over, like, right after Ichiro, like, maybe even the same year, like, a few months after or something. But it was like nobody was talking about him. And one of the things that you might also notice about this guy is he used to dye his hair bright blonde. He always wore these little gold chains. He had a little earring in his ear. He just thought he was hot stuff. 
I like it just never translated into America. I mean, he was okay in Japan, of course, or else he wouldn't have made it over here. But I mean, he just thought he was just like setting the world on fire. If you remember Shinjo, you'll remember that. That's pretty hilarious. The next up, I don't have a card for this guy, but his name is Norihiro Nakamura. He is the third baseman. So um, we got Irabi was a right hander, right handed uh, starting pitcher. Shinjo is an outfielder. This guy is Norihito Nakamura. I just have to read this real quick. So, in 2002, he agreed to a two-year deal for $7 million with the New York Mets. But after the word, after word leaked out, before he could actually formally notify the Japanese group uh, team, Osaka Kintetsu Buffaloes, management Nakamura rejected the deal, saying, I cannot trust such a team which leaked this information at its own website not knowing that each team's site is managed by Major League Baseball, and re and he re-signed with the Contetsu over considerable controversy. So he was mad he got busted for signing a contract with the Mets before he actually let his team know in Japan that he was leaving. So he, he embarrassed himself, so he decided to save face and break the contract to go back to Japan and play that play. So then... He goes. He comes back in 2005 and gets signed by the Dodgers. On uh, he walks away from a 10 million dollar contract for a 500 thousand non guaranteed minor league deal with the Dodgers, and he's injured. He gets injured, so they decide to let him start playing third base because uh, Adrian Beltre ends up leaving for free agency, but he ends up sucking, and they send him down to Triple A, the 50, Las, Las Vegas 51st, 51s, and then he says this. Just after being released, he said, if Ichiro had started his career under a minor league contract like me, he couldn't be called up to the major leagues. This year is a kind of penalty for me. I don't know why I played in the minor leagues. So even though he got called up and he completely sucked, like literally he had like no stats, he was, it was always somebody else's fault. It's either the Mets or it's Ichiro's fault or whatever. So this guy's a real winner. I wish I had a card of his because that would have been classic. Next up is shortstop Kazuhiro Matsui, or Little Matsui. He was a shortstop. He came over from 04 to 2010, so he had a pretty long career, actually, in, in America, because obviously most of these guys are coming over when they're already in their mid-30s, early 30s, sometimes late 20s, but really they're in their early 30s. So he has six years here. He plays with the uh, Mets. I know he plays with the Rockies as well. And I want to say he plays somewhere else. Uh, maybe Padres? I'm not for sure, but he played somewhere. But uh, he had... He was the very first position player uh, that came over. Now, Ichiro was the first outfielder. Shinjo was shortly behind him. But he was the very first player to play in the infield. Uh, his batting average was a whopping 2.6 or 2.267. So, again, uh, not that great. Then we have second baseman Tadahiro Iguchi. He played mostly with the White Sox. I think he also played with the Philadelphia Phillies. And he might have ended up, he might have actually been the one to play with the Padres for like a for just a cup of coffee. And he might have played with the Phillies. Now the Phillies, yeah, he played with the Phillies. I think I mentioned that. He was the second baseman. He played from 05 to 08, and his batting average was 0.268. But uh, the reason why I like him a lot is because in Japan, he used to play for the SoftBank Hawks before they were called the Dai Hawks. And I remember him playing when I lived in Japan. He was actually really good. Again, he came over here towards the end of his career. He had, you know, three or four seasons. So, you know, good for him. But he was not that great. So, you know, that is what it is. And again, uh, a big prospect that you know, a lot of these Japanese guys get bring up, brought over and then nothing happens. The next up is Takahito Nomura, and he's a left-handed relief pitcher. And here is a rookie card of his. Most of the cards I'm showing, I believe, are rookie cards, by the way. And so he played with the Milwaukee Brewers, but the joke here with him is, is that he had a 8.66 ERA, and he had only 21 saves, uh, 27 saves over the course of two seasons. So a season and a half. So he was brought over to be a save specialist. And, and over the course of the entire two seasons he played, or a season and a half, really, he barely got to 20. He got barely got broke 20 saves, 25, 27 saves. 
Not that great if you ask me. Then we have a re uh, right-handed relief pitcher, Shingo Takatsu. And then we got a we got him. He played for one, two, a year and a half also. Well, okay, no more. I had the twenty-one saves. Sorry, uh, Takatsu had twenty-seven saves. So this a this a mark better, but still basically only played a season and a half. And played for the White Sox. I believe he went to somewhere else as well, but no good. Not a good guy. And then we have Akinori Iwamura. Now, he started out kind of hot. He played for the Tampa Bay Rays, the Tampa Bay Double Rays. But he played from 07 to 2010. But again, his batting average was 2.267. So he barely, you know, again, just flirting around that middle middle uh, of the 200s there. So, again, not that great of a player. And he bounced around a little bit too towards the end. But he started out kind of a big deal, especially because the Rays were really good when he was on the team. And he contributed okay, but then the wheels fell off. Then a lot of people remember this guy, Kosuke Hukadome with the Chicago Cubs. He played from 08 to 2012. He only had 16 home runs. He had a .258 um, batting average. And uh, 40, I believe only 42 hits. Man, that's that's awful. No, I'm sorry. He had 42 home runs, and Iwamura had 16 home runs. I apologize. So he had 42 home runs over the course of four seasons at a .258 batting average. Again, nothing excitable there. Then we have a left-handed relief pitcher. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, left-handed relief pitcher. And it is Ken Takahashi with the New York Mets. Now, this guy was so good. He lasted from May 9th, or May of 2009 to September 2009. He was 0 for 1 <coughs> in his uh, career. But the one cool thing about him was he was the third player ever to be over 40 years old and playing baseball history, to be who start his career at 40 years old. It was like Satchel Page, one other guy, and this guy here. So that's kind of a cool little tidbit about Ken Takahashi. The next up is a guy I can't, I don't have a card of. It's, he was a, he played left field, Kins, Kinsuke Tanaka. He he played from May. 2013 to September 2013. So, again, he had zero home runs and one RBI. He batted a .269. So, that was that was how good he was. Some of these guys don't even know they even had cards in America. They were, like, gone so fast. And then the last guy I have was another SoftBank Hawks uh, and then Dying Hawks uh, player. The only catcher to ever come to America from Japan Kenji Jojima, he played from 06 to 09, all with the Seattle Mariners. He had a .268 batting average. And um, he actually was pretty good. I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I say all this with kind of tongue-in-cheek, but I wanted to just kind of showcase some of the Japanese players. It's not really a good kind of showcase, but I just wanted to kind of say, you know, some of these guys, you know, they do come over here at the tail end of their careers. At least most of them do. Very like um, Otani is one of the very few guys who came over as a young guy. I think he's like in his early twenties, early to mid twenties, which is unusual. So you got to think, you know, think of like Derek Jeter left and he was like thirty eight years old and he goes to Japan and plays, or you know, or he comes to America and plays. He's not going to be the Derek Jeter we know, you know. Randy Johnson, he, he, he stops playing at 36, 37, comes over here. I'm not saying that they don't have some couple good years, but people are not going to expect much out of them after that. You know, they're, they, they're at the end of their careers. Uh, most, of the, most of the time, you know, we don't even want to take players that are older to our, into uh, American Major League Baseball because we think they're pretty much done. So I don't understand why we do it for Japanese players who are at the tail end of their careers, though they might have been studs, 
over the course of their life, their careers, they're kind of suck now, but we still take chances on them. I mean, you know, if you think about it, you have Ichiro, you have Hideki Matsui to a lesser degree, you have Hideo Nomo, and I mean, that's kind of like, I kind of think that's about it out of the place. Sasaki, uh, Katsuhiro Sasaki, as I say, he was awesome. Uh, he said, who was a relief pitcher for the Mariners. I mean, that's it. Like, less than a dozen Japanese players actually were played at elite level, honestly. And if there's probably 30 or 40 will come over here now, I think total, I'm sure. So if you think about that, that's not a very good track record of how many. I mean, you know, Darvish, time will tell. Tanaka, time will tell. They both are pretty good. They've been good. But longevity is the key here. Otani... I mean, one year and he got injured and, you know, it's up in the air where he what he's going to be up to. He's going to be just a designated hitter in the future. Is he actually going to become a stay pitcher? It's a lot of question marks about Otani and his, and his future. I mean, I'm sure he has a future with the Major League Baseball, um, but what will that future look like is the question. So anyways, guys, uh, that's Caleb's uh, response video. I am going to uh, make sure I put, put it on his channel. To let everybody know I did this because it is a, a very cool uh, ideal for everybody. So I want to make sure you know that. But again, the name of his channel is Caleb's Cards TTM Autographs and more. I have to write it down because it's a lot to remember and I don't want to mess it up. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy the video. I know it's long-winded as I am usually. I try to be careful about that. It never works. But I just really thought this was a kind of cool idea. So Caleb, thank you very much. I love your channel. It's so much fun to watch you get your autographs through the mail. If you're an autograph collector, guys, uh, especially TTM, he is a fantastic resource for uh, autograph collecting. And he does everything. Celebrities, uh, military, movies, TV shows, uh, obviously baseball, football, hockey, Olympics. Uh, just everybody, everybody and anybody that signs through the mail, he tries to get and attain. It is a hilarious, uh, not hilarious, it is a, uh awesome, awesome channel. Military veterans, World War II guys, it's awesome. I could just sit there, he does a good, he does a lot of good uh, content, he does a lot of good e explanation um, of what, who he, who he's getting and how he got it and, and the background. He's kind of like the TTM version of Bowman 53 Alex. So if you like Bowman 53, Alex, the way he approaches his like laid back, relaxed mentality and approach, Caleb's the exact same way. So anyways, guys, thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't, sorry, sorry. I do still appreciate you. Support each other, love each other, respect each other, and I'm out.